So the only thing that was existing was one large tree right in the middle. And so it had a very dense root zone that uh, was a thick matted roots all the way out to the drip line. Uh, however, the soil on here was a little bit better and it's actually full sun in this front region. So I did woolly thyme and <clears throat> to begin here on the corner and moving around, I moved uh, some um, creeping phlox, which is a pink flowering spring flowering plant uh, into position and then also we have a rose here this is actually a scented knockout and along the back border a row of salvia so I used a couple different paprika uh, achillea and those are dotted around just here and there and then there's a yellow one further down echinacea uh, these are ruby star cone flowers and there's four of those in the middle a perovsky I don't know if that's a blue jean baby or a rocket man and then sedums, three of those dotted around. There's another one. Um, here we have a row of seven moonbeam threadleaf coreopsis. It's um, got three butterfly milkweeds dotted in. If those don't make it, which they can be a little bit unpredictable, I'll put in maybe some small, uh, small swamp milkweed or something else. And so for foliagentris, there's two uh, blue stars. There's one of them. That's the Hubrecti, which I tend to prefer because it's a lot more lacy than the uh, Tabernay Montana. And two different types of peonies. This one's a little smaller and it's white. I forgot the cultivar name. And to mask this unusual uh, metal pole, I added four, uh, actually five Carl Forrester grasses, which should uh, shoot up and give a lot of coverage. And keeping with the um, repetition of the Penicetum grass, there's a couple more here, as well as a lavender for the passersby, and um, that's a low aster it's a new england but it's like it might be called october skies so it stays quite flat uh, another plant that i used for filler is the uh, penstemon digitalis and there's three of them represented there and there's a bunch more up at the top um, so just here we have uh, veronicastrum that's the culver's root which is a wonderful architectural plant and it'll spring up and give some interest and behind that is a peptesia i think it's a yellow flowering um, now we have three Monardas, uh, beautiful examples. And there's a Mullen back there, which also has strong architectural interest and a cat mint. And there's another cluster of uh, six different uh, penstemons. And the more conventional yellow yarrow there. Um, I chose a little quick, little quick fire hydrangea. And we had some difficulty digging in the roots. And so there's repetition as you as you pass by or or your eye um, moves down the down the design. So here's a couple more echinacea, and there's three caramel heucheras, um, and then here terminating uh, with the phlox, I moved into another low ground cover, and then this one is a ground cover sedum. So it's a really really busy intersection. So I'm pleased about that since it's a complete design of my own. And so here we have a Joe Pie weed, Little Joe. And then I have just one on this side of the tree, but then more as you, as you get past. I'd use uh, two different types of epimedium. At the top there is pretty and pink. And then later there's a more of a yellow uh, conventional sulfur style. And this is a mountain mint. And some wood rough, so hopefully that'll get established. It looks a little spare here, but the root zone was just far too onerous to dig into. Uh, five rosans, uh, geraniums there at the base. So there's a lot of uh, plants that are going to spill out over the walk here, but the um, pedestrians and bicyclists will still have about uh, six feet to get past, so that shouldn't be any trouble. So we have some Gilbert uh, Japanese anemones. Um, usually those can kind of spread aggressively, but the soil I don't think is going to really allow them to um, become too much of a menace, and plus it gives uh, some good good height and good late season interest and a couple more um, Joe Pye weeds. So I chose five different, um, they're called like drinking gourd uh, hostas which maybe have a three foot spread and they're dotted around and then um, these are uh, stained glass hostas, three of those for varying interest. And here's the sulfury epimedium and I put in three different examples of the bridal veil a still be um, and just digging was such a mess that some of the layout got shifted six inches here or there but once it fills in 
especially once the hostas are bigger, it, it won't really matter too much. And just here we've got three Rome. Um, so Rome is red, something about the city of Rome, um, Hellebores, which will start out the show next spring. And at the top, Silver Sword, Azaleas. And so there's some irrigation, uh, perhaps that comes on, perhaps, perhaps not. I'm still sort of sorting that out with the, um, the client. Oh, and a Simisifuga at the top. So I think they've changed the Latin of that, but it's a bug bang. Um, and that also gives a strong architectural height here. I was going to put in some meadow rue, uh, thelictrum, but I couldn't locate any at this time of the year. And some Solomon seal here, and that really rounds out the design. So from um, the perspective of passers-by, I wanted to have uh, a lot of interest. It's about 40 or so different plant species, and um, much improved uh, from a simple uninspired lawn and so this is going to be the vantage point for most of the motorists.